Hello guys, Croft is here, today we'll be explaining the entire Indiana Jones timeline including the last and final movie in the franchise, The Dial of Destiny. We'll cover the entire Indiana Jones biography, so the timeline is divided into six major parts, with the first one being the early period and five other ones describing each movie in the franchise. We'll start in 1000 BC when the Ark of the Covenant is created by the Israelites to house the stone tablets on which the Ten Commandments were written. In 568 BC, the Ark of the Covenant was last seen in Jerusalem before it disappeared. In 212 BC, Archimedes is about to complete the Antikythera, a mechanism which will play a crucial role in the Dial of Destiny. Around 32 AD, the Holy Grail was crafted by Jesus Christ. From the novels and the TV series Young Indiana Jones Chronicles, we know that on December 12, 1872, Henry Walton Jones Sr., Indy's father, is born in Scotland. In his late 20s, Henry has a vision of a wine glass starting to glow and then transforming into the Holy Grail. Then a mysterious unknown voice tells him that he needs to find the grail, just like the knights of old. Struck by this vision, Henry goes on a lifelong quest to find the cup that Jesus drank from at the Last Supper. On July 1st, 1899, Henry Walton Jones Jr., also known as Indiana Jones, is born in Princeton, New Jersey. Between 1908 and 1910, Indy spends lots of time in Europe as his father, Henry Jones Sr., goes on a world tour to give his lectures on medieval ages all over the world and he takes his wife and son with him. In 1912, Indy's mother, Anna Mary Jones, tragically passes away, which leaves a significant impact on Indy and his character. Later the same year, Indiana Jones recovers his first artifact that ignites his interest in adventure archaeology. In a Boy Scout camp, he tries to stop treasure hunters from seizing a precious artifact, the Cross of Coronado. Indy successfully steals the cross from Garth, but the local sheriff returns the cross to the mysterious man with a Panama hat. Indy is disappointed, but this may be the moment he decides to become a treasure hunter, so he copies some of Garth's wardrobe like the jacket and the hat. Between 1916 and 1917, Indy serves as a messenger in the Belgian army during World War I, which allows him to gain valuable experience in combat and espionage. Between 1919 and 1920, Indiana Jones studies archaeology and anthropology at the University of Chicago, developing a passion for ancient civilizations and relics. In 1922, Indy joins an archaeological dig in the ancient city of Ur in Iraq, where he meets another archaeologist student, René Belloc. The two first become friends, but over time, the friendship turns into rivalry, with Belloc betraying Indy to the Nazis years later. In 1925, Indy travels to Java, Indonesia, to study under a famous archaeologist named Abner Ravenwood, who becomes his mentor. There Indy meets his daughter, Marion Ravenwood, and they form an illicit romantic relationship. However, it abruptly ends as Jones leaves her in 1926. In 1935, Indy embarks on his earliest adventure that is featured in the movie The Temple of Doom. However, this movie is actually the second one in the franchise and came out as a prequel to the first one, The Raiders of the Lost Ark. So, in 1935, Indy nearly escapes an assassination attempt from a Shanghai Mafia boss and flees the country on a plane with a young orphan short round and a club dancer, Willie Scott. The pilot, who actually works for the Mafia boss, dumps the fuel and parachutes away so Jones, Willie and short round escape using an inflatable raft before the plane crashes. The trio rides down the Himalayas and falls into a river before stumbling upon the village of Mayapur in India. Devastated villagers explain that evil followers from Patcott Palace kidnapped older children and stole their sacred stone, causing extreme drought and despair in the village. They beg Jones to help retrieving their sacred stone and their children from Patcott Palace. Indiana agrees to help, deducing that the stolen stone is one of the five Sankura stones, sacred stone-shaped lingams given to the people by Shiva to fight the forces of evil. The trio travels to the palace and, after a warm welcome, is allowed to stay for the night. However, at night time, Jones is attacked by an assassin but manages to kill him and then discovers an entrance to underground tunnels that span deep under the palace. 
The exploration of the tunnels leads them to a sacred temple where Thunji cult followers practice black magic and human sacrifice. Hypnotized by the high priest Mola Ram, cultists enslave kidnapped children and force them to mine precious metals and find the remaining Sankura stones. During an attempt to retrieve the stones, Mola Ram captures Jones, Short Round, and Willie and forces Indiana to drink a potion during a mind control ritual which temporarily converts Indy into a member of the cult. Hypnotized Indy acts as an executioner and prepares Willie for human sacrifice, while Short Round is forced to work in mines. However, he escapes and manages to wake Indy up from the voodoo hypnosis, saving Willie's life. Using an element of surprise, Indy causes chaos in the temple, defeats the cold guards, frees the children, and retrieves the Sankura stones. The trio exits the underground tunnels, and while crossing the bridge, Mola Ram and his men ambush them, blocking both exits. Indy cuts the rope bridge, getting rid of the attackers, however, Ram manages to hang on. As Indy and Ram fight over the stones, Indy invokes the name of Shiva, which inflames the stones, making them nearly impossible to hold. Ram struggles to hold the burning stones, slips and falls in the river, where he's devoured by crocodiles. British Indian army soldiers defeat the remaining cultists as Jones with his friends go back in the Mayapur village to return the last Sankura stone and bring back the kidnapped children. And the movie ends with celebration in the village as Indiana and Willie embrace. Then in 1936, Indiana Jones goes on another adventure featured in the movie The Raiders of the Lost Ark. Indiana seizes the golden idol from an ancient Peruvian temple, but Rene Belloc, a rival archaeologist, tricks Jones and steals the idol. Jones nearly escapes death and leaves Peru on a seaplane. Back in the US, army intelligence agents brief Jones about Nazis' excavations in Tanis, Egypt, and one of their intercepted messages mentions Jones' old mentor, Abner Ravenwood. Jones realizes that the Nazis seek the Ark of the Covenant, a powerful ancient artifact that would grant devastating abilities to Adolf Hitler and his army. So Jones agrees to help the military to find the Ark first, before the Nazis. At a bar in Nepal, Jones meets Marion, with whom he once had an illicit relationship, and he learns that her father and his mentor Abner Ravenwood is dead. Later the same evening, Arnold Todd with other Gestapo agents break into the bar and try to take the medallion, which is believed to point to the location of the Ark. After intense fighting, Todd reaches for the medallion in the flames, but is unable to hold it. However, its imprint is burnt onto his hand. After Marion and Jones seize the medallion and escape the burning bar, Marion joins Indy on his quest for the Ark. On their way to Cairo, they meet Jones' friend, Salah, who reveals that the Nazis have one-sided replica of the medallion from the burn on Todd's hand. Once the three reach Cairo, the Nazis and hired mercenaries ambush Jones, and after an intense chase, Marion appears to be killed in a car explosion, leaving Jones absolutely devastated. Jones finds an imam who deciphers medallion inscriptions, revealing that one side warns against disturbing the Ark, and the other uncovers the correct measurement for the Staff of Ra, an object that would point to the location of the Ark. Jones realizes that the Nazis are excavating in the wrong spot, so he sneaks into an ancient site and uses the Staff of Ra of the correct height to locate the Ark of the Covenant. Jones and Sala arrive to the Well of Souls and recover the Ark, a golden, finely decorated chest, but Belloc and the Nazis ambush them and steal the Ark. It turns out that Belloc kept Marion captive all this time, and he leaves her and Jones in the well filled with snakes. The pair manages to escape and Jones steals the truck carrying the Ark. When Marion and Jones are in the process of transporting the Ark to London on a ship, a Nazi submarine intercepts them and seizes the Ark and Marion. Jones manages to secretly embark on the submarine and travels with the Nazis to an island in the Aegean Sea. Belloc wants to see if the Ark of the Covenant truly has extraordinary properties before delivering it to Hitler. 
On the island, Jones knocks out one of the Nazi soldiers and threatens to destroy the Ark, but surrenders after Belloc realizes that Jones would never destroy something so historically significant. So Belloc ties up Jones and Marion and proceeds to open the Ark with religious caution and admiration. However, Belloc only finds sand inside while Jones tells Marion to close her eyes and avoid looking at the Ark. Moments later, the Ark releases flashing spirits and beams of light and energy that storm around the landscape, killing Belloc and all the Nazis before abruptly shutting the Ark's lid. As Jones and Marion open their eyes, they realize their bindings are gone and that all the Nazis have completely disappeared. Back in Washington, the US officials reward Jones for securing the Ark and despite his warnings about its immense powers, they assure him that their top men will be studying it so he has nothing to worry about. The Ark is then placed in a wooden crate and stored in a large warehouse with countless other top secret boxes that seem to be there for a long time. In 1938, Jones embarks on another adventure in search of his father and the Holy Grail, which is depicted in the movie Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. So in 1938, Jones reclaims his first ever artifact, the Cross of Coronado, on the Portuguese coast from Panama hat collector who seized it from Indy in 1912. After returning the cross to its rightful place in the museum, Indy assumes the role of an archaeology professor, seemingly taking a break from his treasure hunting adventures. However, a wealthy businessman, Walter Donovan, surprises Indy with unfortunate news that his father, Henry Jones Sr., has vanished without a trace while looking for the Holy Grail. Walter shows a partial engraving that, if completed, would point to the location of the Grail, so Indy decides to assist Walter in finding the Grail and his father. After Jones receives his father's diary in the mail containing his lifelong research on the Grail, he travels to Venice, Italy with his friend Marcus Brody, where he meets Henry's associate Elsa Schneider. Beneath the library where Henry was last seen, Jones and Schneider discover a catacomb containing an inscribed shield, which reveals that the path to the Grail begins in Iskanderum. The two are subsequently attacked by a mysterious group who reveal themselves to be the sacred order of the cruciform sword dedicated to protecting the grail. After saving the group's leader, Kazim, he informs Jones that Henry is being held at a castle in Austria. Jones entrusts Marcus with a map from the diary detailing a route to the grail and sends him to Iskanderum to prepare for their expedition. After discovering that their rooms have been searched, Jones reveals the diary's existence to Schneider before they sleep together. In Austria, Jones and Schneider infiltrate the castle, discovering it to be under Nazi control. Jones finds Henry and tries to escape, but surrenders after Schneider is held captive by the Nazis. She reveals herself to be a Nazi collaborator, takes the diary and ties up Jones and Henry, who learn that Donovan is also working with the Nazis. After Jones and his father escape the castle, they travel to Berlin to retrieve the diary from Schneider. Then Indiana, his father and their old friend Sala find themselves in a race against the Nazis to get the Grail. After sneaking into a javelin, crashing a plane and destroying a Nazi tank, Indy finally reaches a temple deep in the desert that encloses the Holy Grail. As Jones, Henry, Marcus and Sala approach the temple, they observe the Nazis attempting to overcome the temple's deadly traps. Donovan shoots Henry Sr., which forces Indy to figure out how to pass through life-threatening traps. Indy is able to overcome the obstacles using the research from his father's diary and he paves the way to the Grail Chamber where a Crusader Knight guarded the Grail for hundreds of years. The knight explains that only the one who's worthy will find the true grail from dozens of fake cups. With Elsa's advice, Donovan selects a wrong cup and instead of immortality, he ages in seconds and dies, paying the ultimate price for his mistake. However, Indy sees through shiny exterior of fake grails and finds the real grail which allows him to save his father from a deadly wound. The Crusader Knight cautions them that the Grail cannot be taken outside of the temple, however Elsa forgets his warning and breaches the seal, causing the destruction of the temple. Elsa falls in the crevice while trying to reach for the Grail, and Indy almost meets the same fate, but his father tells him to let go. 
which ultimately saves Indiana as the temple collapses. Indiana also seems to let go of the old grudges against his father and they all celebrate completing their quest and ride off in the sunset. Between 1941 and 1945, Indy serves as an officer for the US intelligence agency during World War II, conducting covert missions against the Nazis and recovering important artifacts. Some events of the final Indiana Jones movie, The Dial of Destiny, take place in 1944. Indiana Jones and his colleague Basil Shaw are captured by the Nazis while attempting to retrieve an artifact, the Lance of Longinus. Meanwhile, astrophysicist Jürgen Voller discovers the Archimedes' dial capable of locating breakages in the fabric of time. Jones escapes and boards a train full of stolen antiquities. He then seizes the dial and jumps off the train before it derails. Then, Harrison Ford makes a rare appearance in the fifth episode of season 2 of Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. The episode sets in in 1950 when Indiana Jones and his friend Grey Cloud find themselves in a car chase through the snowy countryside of Wyoming. Grey Cloud unveils the ancient peace pipe, which is what the thieves are after. As Jones and his friend wait in a cabin, Jones plays a saxophone and tells a story from his 20s, which is what most of the episode is about. At the end, when pursuers take the peace pipe from them, Indiana strikes a note on his sax, triggering a cascade of snow from the branches of the surrounding trees, burying the thieves and returning the peace pipe back in his possession. The following year, 1951, marks the death of Henry Jones Sr., Indiana Jones' father, followed by the death of Marcus Brody, Indy's close friend. The next Indy's big adventure happens about five years later and it's depicted in the movie The Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. In 1957, Indiana Jones and his companion George Mac McHale are abducted by Soviet operatives under the command of Arena Spalko. The Soviets sneak into Hangar 51 in Nevada and utilize Jones to locate the alien body that was recovered after the Roswell event. The warehouse seems to house all supernatural artifacts, including the Ark of the Covenant. Mikhail, who secretly works for the Soviets, betrays Indy, but Jones manages to flee to a nearby city model that is about to be decimated by a nuclear test. Jones manages to escape the explosion in a refrigerator lined with lead before being questioned by the FBI. When Jones returns to Marshall College, he finds out that he has been given an indefinite leave. Shortly after, a young greaser, Matt Williams, approaches Jones and tells him that Harold Oxley, Jones' old friend, discovered the Crystal Skull in Peru before he and Williams' mother were abducted. Indy and Matt's conversation is interrupted by Soviet agents who try to catch them, but they get away and travel to Peru. The two discover carvings made by Oxley, which leads them to Francisco de Orellana's grave, where they find the Crystal Skull. Once they exit the grave, the Soviets capture them and send to a camp in the Amazon. There they meet Indy's first love, Marion Ravenwood, who reveals herself to be William's mad mother, and she tells Jones that Williams is his son. Spalco thinks that the skulls are alien in origin and come from the lost city of Ekator, a place that Soviets force Jones to help them find. Oxley appears to be hypnotized by the skull and he describes the path to the lost city through automatic writing. As the group travels through the Amazon jungle, Jones finds the right moment and takes the skull from the Soviets and escapes along with Williams, Ravenwood, Oxley and Mac, who claims to be working for the CIA. After passing through several waterfalls, Jones and his friends discover a rock structure that leads them to Akator. And after escaping the city's guards, they reach a large temple in the center. There they find evidence that the city was built by aliens and they enter a large chamber containing 13 crystal skeletons. The Soviets who have been following the transceivers planted by Mac also arrive at the chamber. Spalko takes the skull and places it on top of the headless skeleton. The alien wakes up and telepathically offers a reward to Spalko who demands to know everything. When an interdimensional portal opens up above the room, the skeletons combine into a reanimated alien that transfers an immense amount of knowledge into Spalko's mind, ultimately killing her. Jones, Oxley, Ravenwood and Williams escape as Mac is sucked into the portal. As the city collapses, a flying saucer rises from the ruins and travels to another dimension. 
Then Jones and the rest of the group return to the United States. Afterwards, Indy is back working as an archaeology professor and he marries Ravenwood, which symbolizes the end of his treasure hunting adventures and the start of a more settled down life. However, the adventure archaeology doesn't seem to be done with Jones, so in 11 years he embarks on another adventure depicted in the movie The Dial of Destiny. In August 1969, Jones is separated from his wife Marion Ravenwood following the death of their son Matt during the Vietnam War. He is approached at a bar by archaeology student Helena Shaw, the daughter of Basil Shaw with whom he escaped the Nazis in 1944. Jones tells her that the dial was split in two pieces and that her now deceased father was driven to a near insanity while trying to unlock its secrets. They retrieve the first piece of the dial from the college storeroom. But then they are attacked by associates of former Nazi Jürgen Voller, who now works for NASA under a new identity. Knowing Voller's men are after her, Helena escapes with the dial, revealing that her true intention is to sell valuable artifacts for money. Then Jones flees from Voller's men through the New York City subway and seeks help from his old friend, Sala. Indiana travels to Tanier and prevents Helena from selling the first part of the dial at an auction, but Voller ambushes them and seizes the artifact. Jones, Helena and her sidekick Teddy travel to Greece where they retrieve a tablet with instructions to the second part of the dial from the bottom of the Aegean Sea. However, Voller captures them and forces Helena to translate the tablet. Jones and his friends manage to escape and travel to Sicily where they recover the second part of the dial at Archimedes' grave. However, Voller ambushes Jones' group, reassembles the dial and reveals that he plans to time travel back to 1939 to kill Adolf Hitler, in hopes that a better leader will arise and lead Germany to victory in World War II. The dial indicates Voller the exact location of the time fissure to time travel to 1939. But when a plane is about to fly through the portal, Voller realizes that he didn't take into account the continental drift. Due to his mistake, the fissure in time leads them to 212 BC during the siege of Syracuse. As projectiles attack the plane, killing Voller and his men, Jones and Helena parachute away and meet Archimedes himself. Gravely injured, Jones begs Helena to leave him behind in the past, allowing him to become a part of ancient history. But Helena refuses, fearing the possibility of a catastrophic time paradox, so she brings Jones back in 1969. Jones awakens in his apartment, reuniting with his friends and grandchildren, as well as Marion, who reconciles with Jones. And the movie ends with Jones and Marion reminiscing the scene on the boat during the events of the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Thank you guys for watching, let me know your thoughts about the latest Indiana Jones movie, and do you think we'll see other movies in this franchise like prequels or spin-offs? Like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel for more content. My name is Croft, and I'll see you in the next video.